everybody, it is Book Review Friday, and as the title says, I am talking about a book I have been meaning to get through. I, it took me three months to get through this bad boy. It's Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lanny Taylor, the third book in the Daughter Smoke and Bone series. Yeah, you heard that right. But let's get into that later. So basically, if you have not read Daughter Smoke and Bone or Days of Blood and Starlight, yeah, this is the only one I own, this is Ravens, then you're going to not want to watch this video because this is book three, spoilers for the other books, spoilers for this book, so I will try to keep it non-spoilery and let you know when I'm getting into the nitty gritty details of this book. So if you've read this one, if you were like me, a little let down by it and not certain you wanted to continue the series, first of all, continue the series. But I will talk about this book and then move on to the spoiler section. So what is happening right now is that Akiba and Karu are back together. Akiba's father, the emperor, is dead. His uncle has killed him and blamed Akiba and the other misbegotten, which are the, the emperor's children via his concubines, who are basically slaves and soldiers. They are blamed for his death by his uncle and are on the run, so they have joined up with the last remainder of the chimera and are attempting to stop him. And then his uncle does the unexpected. He goes to Earth. This book's a little hard to get through because it's very slow. I expected this to be much more fast paced. It isn't. It isn't at all. Because now we finally learn something that's discussed in book one, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which is the world eaters. We get to learn about those guys. And that was unexpected for me. Because there's something else being built up, what you expect is them versus the new emperor and fighting for freedom and blah 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 like Braveheart styles type thing is not what's happening. Instead that kind of takes a back seat. It comes across towards the beginning and you don't understand why, you don't know what's going on and it made it really really slow to read. Things didn't pick up until towards the end when Akiva's family from his mother's side, the people of the Isles, take a step forward and start interfering and stuff. We learn much more about magic and Sithrir, or however you say that word, I don't know. I don't think there's a glossary, maybe there is. I don't know, is there a glossary? I don't think there is. No, there isn't, there's just acknowledgement. So however you say the magic word, bleh, the word for magic, we get to learn more about them, we learn about Akiva's people, and that myth that Akiva told Karu in book one. This doesn't read like a climax. In fact, there doesn't feel to be a climax. This is book three of at least four book series, a quartet, at least, if not a quintet, or even more books are coming. However, it remains out of trilogy because Lanny Taylor got tired of the world, which I find incredibly frustrating. <laughs> And I had no clue that that's what was happening. I thought, oh, it's the finale, it all ends up great and well done, and no, no, it, it doesn't. What kept me going? One of the things is that Karu is not the pansy of Days of Blood and Starlight. She regains herself. She remembers who she is and why she does what she does and what she's doing with her life. I'm so grateful for that, that I kept it in the computer room beside me and kept picking it up and opening it all the time and going through it because I wanted to keep reading Karu. I loved Karu in book one. I did not like her in Days of Blood and Starlight at all. I hated her, despised her, but she comes back in this and she's the strategist again and the badass again and I love her. Things are so sad, especially with Ziri being trapped in the wolf's body. That is not an easy plot point and it's very, very sad. But everyone starts to get their own happy endings and despite the sadness that's in this book and what's going on in this, it does end on a beautiful note. And I can't wait for the other books to come out. It's going to be a while. She's going to do another series and then maybe come back to it. And if she doesn't, I'm going to get really mad. Now getting into the nitty gritty about specifics. My favorite character had to be Liras. Liras is awesome in this book. I always found her amusing. I think it's in this one where she takes the flower and eats it and Raziel looks at her and goes, well that was unexpected. <laughs> she always read great and she balanced off of Haziel's brightness and she was the dark one and Akiba was the one in the middle. 
trying to regain his sense of self that he lost through what happened in the past. Oh my gosh, she is so amazing. My favorite line has to be, it's the per last of the purple ones, but I had to mention it. And this is when she is facing down Jal, her uncle. He said, there's no ride in the world he'd send then, taunting like a storm in fury. Here was no storm, no fury. There was some new quiet in her, but it didn't shrink or wilt her. Rather, it seemed to enlarge her. She was no mere weapon as she was trained to be, but a woman in full command of her power, unbowed and unbroken, and that was a dangerous thing. Oh my god, I loved her. I love Liras. She is so badass. Definitely my favorite character of this series so far. Oh man, I loved her. When they kiss, that was great. I loved the kiss. Finally, all the way here, you've been waiting after book one, you've been waiting this long for them to kiss and make up. It was beautiful. It brought back that prose that drew me in from book one. Akina's mouth was hungry and sweet and rich and slow and hot, and the kiss was long and deep, and every other measure of scope that was except for infinite. It wasn't that. A kiss must end for another to begin, and it did and did again. And it keeps going for almost a solid more page. Oh, that was great. Zuzanne is hilarious. All she wants is chocolate cake. All she's dying for is chocolate cake. They go into the other world and there's barely any food, least of all chocolate cake. And then they come back to Earth and she's so excited. She's like, I'm going to complain. Why even bother living if you can't complain about the absence of chocolate? What kind of life would that be? A pale one. But what absence of chocolate? What's wrong with this? You better not be messing with me. I would never joke about chocolate. Look, you're missing a page, and there's more chocolate. And so she calls him up. First, we'll have the chocolate cake, and we'll just eat it while you're making the rest, so bring that first, okay? And he told them with what struck Susanna as entirely inadequate display of regret that they'd run out. What? Noise. <laughs> and you can just hear it. <laughs> She's getting angrier and angrier and angrier. <laughs> that was one of the funniest things in the whole book. Oh, Akiva continues the amazingness that's in Days of Blood and Starlight. Let me help you, Kato, please. So many souls, you can't do it alone. She said it wasn't quite redemption. It was so much closer that he never thought he'd come to it. And it was redemption was self-serving, coming for it as it did ribbon tied to what he wanted most in life. For once, Akiva's shame wouldn't rise to the bait. He'd wanted what he'd always wanted, and he better just say it. His own worries and freers be damned. Whoever she loved, him or the wolf or no one, he would find out. It's all I want, to be beside you, helping you. If it takes forever, all the better if it's forever with you. Beautiful. And then the final chapter was phenomenal. I loved that. What happens with Jal was awesome. It's not what you expect. It's not what I expected at all. And that's what I love about it. And it's so fitting. It's just perfect. That was great. I just, I, God, I got to see them face down these world eaters. What do they look like? What are they? How are they going to stop them? I have to know. So many more questions rise up than the other two books combined create. I just, I have to know. And there's not, she's coming out with one eventually. Eventually. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> But all right, that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I know it's short and sweet. I don't have anything written down, and I read this like three weeks ago to Comic-Con and other things. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. I am going to try to work on getting more book reviews up on Friday and get control of this camera and filming it all. Good luck with your reading, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! If it's even recording. Is it recording? Oh! all we get, I will be pissed. If you have not read, what is happening? I spread out like this. I put this in upside down. Good job, Lore. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that turned off or what. That's his name, Jaw. Wookie, wookie, smoky. Can't believe I forgot to do the thumbnail. Do <laughs> Where's button? <laughs>